is David. Today we're going to talk about Azure Functions. Azure Functions are sometimes referred to as a serverless technology. Not because they don't run on a server, but because that server on which they run is abstracted away from you. So you don't really have to think about it when you're writing your code and you're deploying your code. You don't have to worry about where that code is running. You can focus on the code itself, how it's triggered, what it's going to do, and the resources it's going to interact with. I can create an Azure function here within the Azure portal, portal.azure.com, by clicking this Create a Resource button. And I can search for it here, or I can just uh, go under Compute, because I know it's there, and select Function App. A Function App is just a container for your Azure functions. And you need to create a Function App first, and then add functions to it. So let's do that. We're going to create a Function App. We'll call it DG Test Azure uh, Funk App. How about that? Ultimately, there's going to be a URL associated with this, which is that.azurewebsites.net. So this has to be unique, and the green check mark tells me that it is. I'll put it in a resource group. I'll call it DG Test Azure Funk RG. I'll create a brand new one for this. Do I want it to be in Windows or Linux? Um, so I do have a little bit of control over the server that's on. Um, and I want to use the consumption plan. And the consumption plan has a big advantage for me because I only get charged whenever that function actually runs. So if I have something that's to only run infrequently, I don't want to be charged for having that out there. I want to be charged whenever somebody calls it or whenever something triggers it. Um, I'll put it in central US. That makes sense for me because I'm in Chicago right now. I'm going to run .NET, but you could also run a JavaScript or Java. Um, in the storage, it will need a storage account, and I'll just take uh, the the name right here that's created for it and uh, I don't really care about application insights for this demo but that's a nice thing to have as well so I click on this it'll validate that everything I said was consistent tell me if it's not and then it will create a resource group it'll create a storage account and it will create a function app inside of that resource group now this takes about 60 seconds or so I don't want you to have to sit around for that time, so I'm going to pause the video right now and return when my function app is created. We're back. It's about a minute later, and here is our resource right here. Click on that. It'll take us to our function app. I could have gone to it through this menu here if I want to. And here we have our function app, DG Test Azure Funk app right here. Here's a list of all the functions, and of course, we don't have any functions yet. We need to create one, so we can click on this plus or this plus. doesn't really matter. I'll do that, and it'll create a, create a function. Now, you see, we have some options here. We can create it in Visual Studio, in VS Code, or in some other editor. Clicking on these will just bring up the instructions as to how to open up a new project in one of these environments. Uh, and I'll cover that in a later screencast. But today, I just want to do something simple. I'll use the In Portal option by clicking that, and then click Continue. And then it's these, these options. Webhook plus API or timer. This is what's going to trigger the Azure function. I'm not limited to these. A webhook is uh, essentially something that will run when an HTTP request is called. So it turns our function into a web service. Hit a URL with a get or a post and run some code. A timer is just what it sounds like. Every X seconds, this your code will run. And if I click on this, I can see other templates as well. Right here. And you can see that there are triggers for things like uh, when I drop a message onto a queue or onto an event hub or onto a service bus, when something changes in a database, all sorts of things that can trigger the running of our code. Now, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to just choose HTTP trigger, and I'll give the function a name, HTTP trigger one, that's fine, I'll leave that for now, but you probably want to give it a more meaningful name, and then I'll click create right here. And this will create the function within this function app, and it'll actually bring up some sample code. And it's a good way to learn how to actually use these function apps. Um, here's some C-sharp code. It does use this newtonsoft.json, which is a nice JSON parser for .NET. And you can see that it logs some information, which is uh, a way, one way of debugging. Uh, we get something out of the query string. We get the query string name here. We get something from the request body. Read the entire body and deserialize that body here. We want to make sure, let's see, uh, what this says is that um, if the name is not null, then we'll put uh, data.name here, and then we're going to return something. If the, if the name is not null, if we actually pass in a name as a parameter, 
they're going to return a an HTTP 200 response, which means OK, everything's good, and then the body will return hello, comma, and whatever name was passed as a parameter. If we don't pass in a name, we'll pass a, we'll send back a, an HTTP 400 response, which is a bad request. Um, we'll send that back into the body of the string. Please pass the name of the query string in the body. And we can run this right from right here from within the portal by clicking on the Run button. That brings this up right here and actually filled in, in the body, this is a post, name Azure. There's a name value pair. So the name is Azure, and we pass that in, and therefore it says, hello, comma, name. You can see it right here, hello, comma, Azure, and we returned uh, 200, or OK status right here. And we can change that. We can say... The name is David, and run that. It return hello David. If we completely eliminate that and run it, we should get a bad request, and we do. Plus the message, please pass a name on this true query string parameter. We we also can do we can do the query parameter because of the way the code's written, or we can do it here in the body. I can do that in the query parameter. I'll say a name value pair is name equals David. How about that? And I'll run that. And again, we get a 200 back. Hello David. We can also test it within our browser or within our code by grabbing this function URL. I click on that and I can see that there's my function URL. Remember I said it would be the name that we gave the function app dot Azure websites dot net, well, that's unique, and then API and then we have some long gobbledygook here to represent uh, uh, a key that you can give to your users to keep to protect this. So if I paste this into here Notice I don't have a, a name parameter, so this should return a 400 and the message please pass a name on the query string. But if I add a name parameter, I've already got one query string parameter, so I need to add a second one with these ampersand name equals, um, I'll put down uh, Paul because Paul Allen just passed away yesterday. And there we go, hello Paul. So we can test it this way. We can test it in our code. We can test it in our um, uh, something like Postman or Fiddler if we want to send an HTTP request. All of these are available to us. And notice we didn't have to deploy it anywhere. We didn't have to worry about the server other than answering one question about whether we want this to run on Windows or Linux. All of that is abstracted away from us. It is just available to us. Today we've learned about Azure Functions and HTTP triggers. This is David. Thank you for watching.